Okay, a quick look at the phenomenon of unequal crossing over and the effects that it can have, illustrated in the book with the little somewhat gruesome story of uh, John Dalton's eyes. So, uh, using the same general format here, uh, on the top of the screen you can see I have two X chromosomes, chromosome 1, chromosome 2, normal chromosomes, identical. The green and red boxes represent two particular genes, one for the green responsive opsin, the other for the red responsive opsin, both of which are on the X chromosome. So if we get crossing over, say, here, and typically we, we illustrate that with an X, it doesn't mean something's wrong, it's just that uh, it, it symbolizes this part of this chromosome crosses over and it gets attached to this part of this chromosome and vice versa. So they're simply swapping pieces. If we do that, then we end up with the X1 chromosome being attached to the remainder of the X, oops, there we go, the X2 chromosome, and vice versa. The, the left end, as it's drawn here, of the X2 chromosome gets lined up with the right end of the X1 chromosome. And again, two different chromosomes in a female, um, so two different copies of the same chromosome, same gene, same order. Could be different alleles on the different chromosomes, but not in this particular case. It doesn't, it doesn't matter whether there are or not. Uh, so you can see that the end result here is two identical chromosomes that effectively are exactly as they were before as far as these two genes are concerned. We can have a crossing, uh, crossover event occur at some other position. doesn't matter. We can have it happen here. And then in that case, what we see is exactly the same thing, that we get the left end of chromosome 1 attached to the right end of chromosome 2, and the left end of chromosome 2 attached to the right end of chromosome 1. But again, these are both identical, effectively, identical chromosomes. Now what happens if these two homologs line up out of register, however? We can still have a crossover event, but it's, again, these two homologs are out of register, so what's going to happen now is that we're going to get the same uh, thing as before, where the left end of the uh, homolog number one lines up with, and, or rather is recombined with, and forms a compound chrom or forms a chromosome with the right end of chromosome homolog two, and the left end of homolog two lines up with the right end of homolog one, resulting in two abnormal chromosomes. Now, in this particular individual, each of these cells is going to be okay because they've got one, two copies of the green and one, two copies of the red uh, opsin. But in this female's gametes, you're going to get either a homolog with two copies of the green and one copy of the red opsin, and another homolog with only one copy of the red opsin, no copies of the green. If that X chromosome, which is missing the green opsin gene, and other genes as well perhaps, but this is the, we're concerned with the gene, green opsin gene in this example, if that is fertilized by a sperm carrying a Y chromosome, then the, the male born from that fertilization is going to be colorblind for red-green because he won't have the green opsin gene producing the green opsin protein to uh, distinguish green and red. Um, so that's the bottom line of the problem caused by unequal crossing over, that the depending on where the crossover is, which chromosomes it is, uh, subsequent cells themselves, I mean, if it's a mutation in a somatic cell, the cells are fine, they just got a rearrangement of all the same number, the same normal genes. Um, but if it's a gamete producing cell, a germline cell, then some of the gametes are going to have one uh, bad, abnormal, defective, uh, rearranged copy, and other gamete cells will have the other complementary rearranged copy. And this may result in problems further down the road.